All right, gonna take a minute or two here to answer this letter here from Belgium. Uh, and just trying to do a real quick video here. A lot of times I let things go and it goes for a long time because we're real busy, but I thought, hey, I just have a few minutes I can answer this thing. So I just want to get this out for you because I can, uh, kind of rough uh, what you're going through here, but it's, it's, sadly it's very common with people with Catholic relatives. It's just really sad. Um, it says here, uh, to Brian Denlinger, the reason why I write you this letter is because I can use some help in this difficult time. It started a week ago when my mother came back from her trip to the pilgrimage site in Lourdes, of Lourdes in France. Um, she had been there for a few days as she does almost every year with a few friends. She asked me if I wanted to go and, uh, and replied that I did not. Uh, she did not mind it, although I could see from her face that she did not like this. My relationship with my mother and the rest of the family has always been good. Here and there uh, were a few things we disagreed about, but that happens in every good family sometimes. Yeah. When she returned from her trip from Lourdes, uh, she called me and she said she had brought something uh, for me, a gift which I would uh, be very happy with. Of course, I was very curious about the gift, and I went to her house that day to see what it was. It was a small box, and my mother said, be careful because it can break. Break. When I opened it very carefully, I saw that there was a small glass pyramid in the box with a Mary statue depicted in that pyramid and a sort of nimbus around her head that referred to divinity. There was also an ornamental piece that was provided with light by means of a switch that you could turn on or off to set up the pyramid. Um, you can view this glass pyramid and the decorative piece on the photos that I have sent. Uh, you can keep these for use. Okay, just stop there for just a minute. Let me show you the pictures here, everybody out there. Because again, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to do this thing in video because I know some of you probably are going through similar things. And uh, with Catholic relatives and whatnot. And uh, trying not to tear this thing. And, you know, it's, it's a, a thing of, it's a kind of a spiritual stronghold. Um, okay, it's taped at the top there. Excuse me. <laughs> well, I figure out how to get this bag open here. I'm getting it. But you know, there's some some real deceptive stuff in Roman Catholicism, and it can really destroy families, um, especially when somebody gets saved out of it. Excuse me. Just drop the pictures. Okay. Um, here we have the pyramid with Mary in it. Kind of strange, really. And there it is sitting on the base. You can see pretty good there. Like that, I'm trying to get the focus. And finally you have it when the thing lights up. Like that. That's in the book of Acts someplace. Remember when that time when Mary, you know, was in the pyramid and they lit it up and things. Getting back to the letter here. Uh, my first impression was a moment of silence and my mother asked, what do you think about it? Is it not beautiful? To which I said, yes, but with all respect for you, um, but why is Mary in a pyramid with a kind of circle above her head, I asked her. This has no meaning to Christianity. Apparently this was not a good question. She took the gift out of my hands and said, Why have you changed that way, disrespecting Mary, our Queen of Salvation? Have we raised you like this? With this mentality, you will never come to heaven, never. God will never accept you. You dishonor me and your whole family. You should be ashamed. I told her that this was not meant to dishonor her, but to make something clear. Before I could finish my sentence, she asked to leave. Um, I did not want to argue with her, so I left. Since then, the contact with my mother and family has only worsened, all because I no longer go to church with her on Sunday, no longer go on pilgrimage with her, and because, according to her, I reject God by not doing all these things. We have grown apart because of my faith in Jesus Christ only. It's very sad for my mother that she does not see in which system she is dragged. She completely ignores me. Our relationship is broken. 
All I have left is my faith in Jesus Christ. Nobody outside of my girlfriend understands the situation. It's a hard time. Is there anything I can do for her? She is so stubborn and lives in her own world, a world of deceit and deception. I pray every day to the Lord that she may see the truth, that he brings enlightenment in her life. Do you have any counsel for me, brother, how I can handle this, to make it clear to her and the rest of the family that there is only one Savior between God and man, our Lord Jesus Christ? This hurts me to know that I really like my mother. I love her. And why is this so difficult? What else can I do? What would you do according to your experience? Get back and answer this here in just a minute. Um, just seeing here. Uh, okay. Actually, it goes kind of into other, some other things there. So I'll, I'll answer the questions first here. Um, what can you do when you have a relative like that? You know, when you have... Um, especially a mother or a father, you know, the Bible says to honor thy father and mother, uh, what do you do? Um, you know, I, I get sarcastic with Catholics and things and sarcastic about stuff like that, um, but but uh, I, I really do love, you know, people in Catholicism. Um, they're deceived. They have a soul, an eternal soul that's going to go to heaven or hell and um, someday, and if they stay in the system, then they're going to go to hell. And um, I have relatives that are not saved, and you know um, I can I'm concerned about them, and I care about them, and I don't want to see them go to hell. So what do you do? Well, um, you know you want to come up with things, and you can just, of course, you can just get into big arguments with them and have a big blow up, and, and they say don't ever come around again, and you never see them again, and they die, and and go to hell, and that's it. And you can just kind of pray for them and. And things and say well hopefully somebody will get to them hopefully they'll hear the truth or whatever and you know it really um, you know you don't have a responsibility to save that person it's between them and the Lord right you have a responsibility to witness you're an ambassador for Jesus Christ when you're saved certainly but you can't force people to get saved that's the point I'm trying to make here you cannot force salvation on other people it has to be a personal relationship between them and the Lord so you can just simply say, well, I'll just kick them out of my life. They'll kick me out of their lives and good riddance. You can do that, but there's other things that you can do. And I know some families are never really close to begin with. So, you know, just being kicked out by your family, excommunicated by your family, so to speak, is not really a big thing. But when you have a family that's real close and you love your parents very much and you love your siblings and things and, and, it, and you get saved and all of a sudden you're saying, I found Jesus. I found you know. I found a personal relationship. Look, look all the truth, the Lord. Show me in the Bible, and you start to see them kind of pull back from you. Boy, it can hurt. It can hurt a lot. And um, I'll show you a couple of verses of Scripture here. My advice for you on this whole thing: Second uh, Timothy chapter two. Turn there in your in your Bible, King James Bible. Second um, Timothy chapter two. Uh, Verse 24, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Your mother there, she opposes herself. It's very sad. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Right? She needs to recover herself. She needs to get that personal relationship figured out between herself and the Lord. And yes, you can go and you can try to confront the, the Catholic system, but you know that doesn't always work. Sometimes it does. Sometimes you can show her from their, the catechism, show her some of the problems and say, you know, Mom, why is this stuff not lining up? You know, and, and I found one of the best ways to witness to Catholics is a lot of Catholics, devout ones, they are very much trained in how to answer heretics like they would consider us to be. Um, you say, you know, uh, the sacraments where that in the Bible and they'll, or you pick up, you pick on other things of divine tradition and they'll, they'll come back and they'll kind of, you know, they're trained how to fight that stuff. But the best thing to do with Catholics, or I've even done this with Jehovah's Witnesses, I say, do you know for sure that you're going to go to heaven when you die? I mean, if you died tonight, do you know for sure, 100% for sure, that you're going to be in heaven? And they say, well, uh, you know, I don't think anybody can know. You say, 
then what did Jesus Christ do? What was his, his death on the cross all about? So that you could be on the shore of salvation? You know, can I show you what the Bible says? That you can know that you have eternal life. Can I please show you that? I want you to go to heaven. Would I be a good son to you if I didn't want you to go to heaven? If I didn't care? I'm telling you these things because I care about you. I love you. You know? Come in in meekness, in other words. Um, I do public ministry. You know, that's why a lot of times I'm very militant, very much in your face and sarcastic and whatever else. Because I'm dealing with people I can't even see. You know, I'm, but when I'm personal witnessing, most of my personal witnessing is very, very gentle. You know, and, and I try to keep the confrontational thing down to a minimum. I mean, unless it's some kind of really there in my face kind of a deal and I have to get a little bit sarcastic and whatever. Okay, then I'll go with that. But try to come in with meekness, right? That's an important thing there. But there's another uh, thing here with this whole argument. I'll show you another verse of Scripture here. Um, if you go down to chapter 3, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Um, and of course, you know, there's, that's, I believe it's talking about um, false converts and things like that. They have a form of godliness, but they, they deny the power thereof from such turn away. Certainly. But, let's take this thing as a reproof, as a rebuke, instruction in righteousness, which is good. You can use things doctrinally that's, okay, it's directed at somebody that's lost, but use it as a little bit of a kick on yourself. How much power do you have spiritually? Have a form of godliness? Well, if you're saved, you definitely do. Um, but how much spiritual power do you have? Uh, when you're dealing in the spiritual warfare warfare realm, realm if I can say it, <laughs> um, you need as much spiritual power as you can get. And let me tell you something. There are many things that you can do in life that are not going to send you to hell, and whatever else, and they might not be openly condemned as sin and whatever, but you need to get some of that stuff out of your life if you want real spiritual power. And that's something that I think is very convicting. You watching television, you listening to the wrong kind of music, you, you know, I think it's even, even a bad idea to eat the wrong kind of food, to be quite frank with you, because, I mean, we're not even talking about, you know, 200 years ago, there wouldn't have been really many issues about eating different types of food. You'd have somebody that's eating herbs, somebody that's eating meat. No big deal. Now it's, well, genetically modified this and high fructose corn syrup that and aspartame here and this and that and all this other stuff. You have to have your diet right or you're not going to be in clear thinking up here. You're not going to have a very easy time with spiritual warfare. What's your health like? Are you taking care of the body that God gave you? The temple of the Holy Ghost that God gave you? Um, sanctification. What are you watching when you get on the internet? Are you wasting your time with a lot of video games and wasting your time with a lot of worldly type of things like that? See, you're dealing here, you're dealing with spiritual warfare. The Catholic Church is the most wicked system on this planet. I will guarantee you that. It is the most evil because it's a counterfeit of the true. And your mother sincerely thinks that she's serving Jesus Christ. She sincerely thinks that she's going to go to heaven, or at least she has a good chance of getting into heaven if she keeps the sacraments and dies in a state of grace. Okay? You're going to be competing against that. And you have to get in there, and you have to come in with spiritual power. Don't be like a, a false convert, in other words, that has a form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. You don't have that Holy Spirit power there that comes from that sanctified life. So in this situation, you look and you say, okay, uh, Lord, I want, I want to see my mother get saved. I want to see my relatives get saved. And I'm willing to do whatever you tell me to do to make that thing happen. Lord, if there's sin in my life, you judge me first before you, know, you grant repentance to my mother there as far as you start to work on her. Help me to clean up. Help me to get my life right. That's tough. That's tough. Again, I mean, I've, I've, right now, I have relatives that ha I haven't even spoken to in years, you know, and uh, 
you know, some of it I didn't handle correctly, to be quite frank. Some of it, it was a, a thing where it got heated and, and I was boom and, you know, it got heated on my side too and I wasn't very meek. What am I doing about that? Well, Lord willing, I'll be able to talk to him and things in the future and, and whatever. And, you know, we have some plans about what you know, seeing relatives and things. I'm not going to get into a lot of that, but we have to get to a point as Christians where we judge ourselves. Okay, it's very important. So that's that's what I would recommend there. Um, get a catechism. Show her. Just just you know, show your Catholic relatives. Have the catechism. Say, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And you're going to have a hard time getting in there because they're thinking, hey. You, you're getting into heresy here and I'm worried about you and whatever else and don't spread that heresy to me. It's kind of a disease type of thing. I could get kicked out of the church and a lot of you know countries it's it's you know you're you are born there, you're baptized there, you are married there, you you know, have your insurance through there and you're gonna be buried there someday and that's that's a very safe place to be in their mind and you're trying to take that away from them. And they look out at the world that you're now in and they're saying it's just this unknown whatever out there. I don't know if I want that. Well, you have to come in with spiritual power through your own sanctified life. Get yourself fixed up, in other words, before the Lord. And okay, you say, I've done that. All right. Now you're ready to come in and come in in a spirit of meekness. Try to be meek as much as you can in this whole situation. Don't let the emotions get to you and things. And just simply go back and say, but you must be born again. Are you born again? Do you know for sure that you're going to go to heaven when you die? I care about you. What should I do? How should I, how should I, you know, talk to you about these issues? Can you please answer some questions from me, for me from the from the scriptures? You know. So, that's that's my advice on it. And, you know, it, it might get to a point where there's a big blow up and your family says, don't ever talk to us again. And you, and you never get to. And they die. And they go to hell. I don't know. Um, but you, you pray for them. You pray fervently for them. And you say, Lord, I want to have that spiritual power there. I think that that's so important. And we oftentimes forget about it. It's, well, I'm saved. I'm born again. So help them to change. Well, that's good. But... You know, what about you? Something to think about. And, and I will say this, you know, condemning myself on that whole thing. Um, there have been some times where I have not had the spiritual power that I should have had. I haven't really been, you know, I've had things in my life that needed to go, and I'm just holding on to them, and the Lord didn't use me in, in different situations as a result. And I'm trying very hard to sanctify stuff out of my life and say, okay, Lord, help me to get rid of this stuff. Help me to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. This talks about in the scriptures. But continue with the letter here. He says, I recently bought a good Bible to read and study the scriptures. I am a novice in that area, so what do you think is a good way or method to start with the Bible? I have seen so many documentaries of Bible study and things, but which part I read first, the Old Testament or the New Testament, requires this a structure. For example, how do I best take notes and which themes are important? Oh boy, there's there's so many different ways to study the Bible. Um, you get back into the Old Testament, there's some of the stuff that's going to be kind of, huh, you know, you're not going to quite get it. You get into the book of Numbers and this guy begat so and so and he lived so many years and you know, the things like that. Um, read the whole Bible, certainly, but if you're newly saved, I would say um, the New Testament is mainly where you want to be especially the Pauline epistles, uh, which would be, um, you know, I would, I would actually start in the book of Acts, which is not technically a Pauline epistle, but Acts and then Romans starts the Pauline epistles and goes through the whole way to the book of um, Philemon. <clears throat> and Hebrews, I think, I do believe was written by Paul. People debate that back and forth, not something I'm going to split, you know, fellowship, you know, part company with people on. But Hebrews is written to a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble firmly believe that but certainly you can read through it you can you know and just read and reread the bible um, but the pauline epistles romans through philemon is where you're going to get doctrine for yourself today as far as taking notes and things another thing that you can do um, do a word study if you're curious about uh, mary 
You want to talk to your mother about Mary or a relative about Mary. Um, get a concordance and look up the word Mary and look at every reference to Mary. And there's just more than just Mary, you know, uh, the mother of Jesus. There, there's, there's Mary Magdalene and things too. But, you know, you can do a word, word study on Mary. You can do a word study on sin, on, you know, eternal or heaven or hell or whatever like that. And um, so there's, there's a lot of different ways. Commentaries, yeah, they're iffy. Um, some are pretty good uh, as far as they have some good information in them, but I usually tend to stay away from commentaries. I really don't recommend any, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> continuing with the letter here, it says, Hopefully you could read everything. I do my best to learn the English language so I can read the King James Bible and understand it. This is because many chapters are being manipulated in our recent Dutch language Bibles. A real shame. Uh, your letter is perfectly clear, very, very good English. Um, I understood everything. So, Thank you for reading my letter. Hopefully you can answer some of it with your point of view. Keep doing the work on YouTube. Your videos are a good help for me. For me personally, you are a sincere man. Do not listen to what others say about you. Preach the gospel your own way. The best for your family, and God bless you. Greetings, and then your name. Um, which I don't read the names unless I'm told to. You know, they say, share my name, please, or whatever. Um, but thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate the thing about, you know, you feel that I'm a sincere man. I try very hard for that. And, um, and it's very difficult for me not to answer people. And, you know, I'm trying here recently. Um, a big push with the ministry is just to kind of uh, ignore the critics and just to preach the gospel. And um, certainly I will still refute some of the lies that are being said about the gospel. Um, but it's it's always a challenge to try and stay focused on the work the Lord has for me. So I really do appreciate your kind words of encouragement. And um, you're not alone on the whole Catholic relative thing. There's a lot of people out there that have Catholic relatives. And they're so bound up in that system. And I'll tell you what, it's not easy to get them out. I mean, let's not kid ourselves here. You say, oh, it's not that hard. You just, you know, you can just go and witness to them, invite them to your church or whatever. Mm -hmm. To get people out of Roman Catholicism, it takes a real miracle. And um, the Lord wants to see that you're serious about it and that you're willing to sanctify your own life and say, hey, you know what, Lord, if I need to get some things out of my life, then you bring conviction and I want spiritual power. That should be a Christian's most uh, earnest desire. That uh, I'll show you a verse of scripture here, and then we'll, we'll finish this video. This is a key scripture. I'll tell you what, I, I talk about this scripture a lot in the book of Philippians. If you're familiar with the ministry, you're probably saying, yeah, I know where he's going. But it's so, so important. Um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 10. That I may know him, talking about Jesus Christ, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. You want the power, the resurrection power, power, spiritual power and things? Well, then you're going to have some fellowship of his sufferings. You're going to have family turning against you. You're going to have people in your local area turning against you. You're going to have uh, friends and, and whatever else and religious leaders that, that mock you and put you down being made conformable unto his death. You don't have to die like he did, died, thankfully. I'm glad that we don't all, you know, as a Christian, you have to die on the cross or something. That would not be good. But uh, conformable unto his death. You have to take up your cross, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 talks about that. Um, you have to make some sacrifices if you want to have any kind of power as a Christian. And uh, that's what I would recommend. Catholic relatives, yeah, it's going to be hard to get to them. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to pry them out of that system. And uh, you're probably not going to get all of them. Um, it can be difficult. It can be very difficult. Uh, again, I've talked with a lot of Catholics and ex-Catholics and things, and, and they say, boy, it's just so hard getting to our Catholic relatives. It just They do not want to listen. See, because Catholicism, like I said earlier, it's it's a whole package. It's birth to death, and people get scared of that. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? So, 
Um, but you know, I will say this too. Another one, other little thing. If you have anything like that around your home, anything like that type of deal, get rid of it. Destroy it. You know, burn it if you can. If you can't burn it, then just destroy the thing. Smash it up with a hammer or something. Get rid of this stuff. Because again, any kind of satanic type of stuff, and this is definitely satanic, there's no scripture for that. I'm glad you have the discernment to, to see that. This type of thing in your home is, you know, it's kind of like the devil could come over and knock on your door and say, hey, uh, I have a right to come into the house here because there's something here that belongs to me, kind of a deal. You know, an occult item in your home. Get rid of that stuff too. Um, any kind of uh, weird Catholic, like a crucifix or rosary or things like that, get that out of there. And I would recommend also another thing it's very good to do is, is write a letter to whatever Catholic church that you were raised in and say, please remove me from any membership affiliations or any affiliation with the Roman Catholic Church. Um, I'm born again now. I don't want anything to do with you. Please remove my name. And um, that's also a very powerful thing to do spiritually speaking. So, I do hope that that answers your letter. Thank you very much for contacting me, uh, and uh, really uh, appreciated the letter. Letter. So, all right, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.